Thank you for being here for an extra special episode of the Valley Girls podcast. What you're about to hear is half of our collaboration with Matt Zucker, host of the popular podcast, City It. If you don't already know the show, when you're done here, go to cityit.com. That's C-I-D-I-O-T.com to learn more about Matt and listen to episode 102, in which we continue the conversation and Matt interviews us. If you found the Valley Girls because of City It, welcome. We're delighted you're here and we hope you'll stick around. Welcome to the Valley Girls, the weekly podcast where we explore everything there is to see, do, try, eat, and experience in New York's Hudson Valley by talking to the makers, the doers, the growers, the creators, and all the unique voices of the Hudson Valley. We're telling the Hudson Valley story one episode at a time. I'm Jenny Leifer, a lifelong Hudson Valley resident. When I'm not co-hosting Valley Girls, you'll find me talking all about health and wellness, finding the best gluten-free eats in the Hudson Valley, and giving back to the community through volunteerism and service. And I'm Jennifer Santiago, a Hudson Valley native who has spent the past 20 years living in Texas. I'm currently splitting my time between Texas and the Hudson Valley as I'm in the process of moving back, and I'm so excited to explore and rediscover everything I love about the region, including hiking, history, and the local art scene. Today, we are talking to our regional podcasting idol, Matt Zucker. Matt's oh. podcast, City It, <laughs> launched in July 2018 and just celebrated its 100th episode. This award-winning podcast has been featured in the Albany Times Union, Chronogram, Country Living, Hudson Valley Magazine, NBC's Today.com, the Daily Yonder, Kingston Wire, and more. City focuses on life in upstate New York, including the Hudson Valley, Catskills, and Albany Capital region. Matt, thank you so much for talking to us today. Uh, so excited to be here, Valley Girls. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, all right, let's get started with how you got to the Hudson Valley. So you, your husband, Brian, and your dog, whose name is Nora Efron, which is amazing. Um, you made the transition from being city people to being weekenders to being full-time Hudson Valley residents. Yep. Um, and when when I look back over your impressive body of work of your hundred some episodes, um, it seems that the podcast kind of evolved along with your personal life and your experience of settling in. In the beginning, you were talking much more about your own personal experience and what you need to think about when you're moving and how you identify a region and how you make friends. And now it seems like you're pretty well dug in as a full-time upstater and you're doing lots of interviews now with local folks. So how's that experience been kind of growing the podcast as your baby along with the life that you and your husband have made? Yeah, that's a cool observation that the beginning of the show was about me getting used to being here, the bugs, the dirt, learning to use a wrench, which I don't know how to do. <laughs> um, people not coming back like with an estimate to fix something. And, um, and then later on, taking more of an interest in the world around me, I guess I got more comfortable. Um, I do find that there's still things I'm curious about. I think my curiosity's changed from what it's like to own a house what it's like to take care of a yard, how to make friends in a new place. And my curiosity's moved on to what about this town? Like what's Newburgh and what's over here and what's on the other side of the Catskills? And should I go to Tannersville? Like finding new places to go and new people rather than the self of of what it's like to acclimate. Although frankly, I'm still acclimating. Like I still think it's, you're never really done. You still feel like the new person until your name is on the street sign. You know what though, even though I grew up here, moved away, came back and I've been back for a long time. I still feel like there's so much growth and there's so much new newness happening up here that there's always something new to explore. So I, I'm sure that feels like that as a, relative newbie in the area because even though i'm from here and i've been back here for so long there are still so many things and jen and i are discovering this for sure with the podcast like so many things that we are discovering in the hudson valley that we had no idea was yeah. right here you know? i agree and it's underneath amazing. you keep finding one thing leads to another like if you get into mm -hmm. like 
why can't I build this thing? Oh, there's a zoning law. Oh, why are the towns set up in this mm -hmm. weird way? Mm -hmm. Why are there five governments for one town? And then you, <laughs> so you pursue the curiosity and you find that things are more interesting than you think. The, the watershed is like this for a reason. Um, the laws are set up this way because New York state is unique in that way, or this county's, you know, there's no big, big, big stores here because of the zoning rules and stuff. So you do still learn new things about how government works. Oh, the counties is where the, the state funnels the money through the county. So counties really matter here. Like I get, like that was new. Like I didn't know that the first year that took me to like season three to figure out when I interviewed someone. So I think you still keep finding layers under the bugs, the worms. So <clears throat> City It is a great brand. It's in fact a registered trademark, which is, is. pretty cool. Um, and so I know that you have a theme of not wanting to be a city. It. You don't want to be the guys who lived in the city for 20 years and then moved up here and you act like big city jerks in this little small town. And you're, I feel like you're really conscious about that. Like, how do I integrate into the lifestyle up here rather than expecting it to adapt around me? But I mean, my impression of you is that you're not at all somebody who's going to come in and be like, this is how we're going to do this. And I feel like that curiosity that you speak of and you're even you saying, you know, after all this time, I'm still acclimating. I feel like that's the key to you doing what you do and having this successful podcast because you're like, uh, you're, you're kind of an anthropologist of living upstate. You're, you're, you you want to know people's stories. You want to know how things work. I mean, I'm from the Hudson Valley. I never once thought about figuring out how regional government works. So I just mm -hmm. think that it's admirable that you have that curiosity and you feel like, well, I'm still settling in. I might always be settling in. And that's what keeps you from actually being a city. -it. Yeah, I think curiosity is a preventive thing for being douchey. Like, I think it helps <laughs> mitigate the douchiness. I mean, I, I'm sure I do things mm -hmm. that, I mean, I don't ride, drive a Range Rover or anything like that, but like, I, I'm sure there are things <laughs> that still embody the outs like not like wanting things a certain way or you know to, you know waiting for somebody to, to to come with an estimate or something that is a little bit still city like i don't think i'll shake that and i don't think i want to but i do i do think it's important to acclimate to some degree and i think it is mm -hmm. you know there's and there's also joy in it like that's the thing is like i don't i left new york like i don't need this to be like new york city i would like things open on mondays i would like to be able to have lunch <laughs> and coffee past three o'clock like i just think there's things that I'd want to be able to do. Um, but that doesn't mean I want what I had. I, I came here for a reason. Yeah, it was a choice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when you are not being this idiot, you're a marketing professional and you were very early to the podcasting game in your professional yeah. life. Was it fairly seamless to make that transition to doing such a personal podcast? And was there anything that surprised you about going from making podcasts for brands to making one so personal? Well, for brands, when I make podcasts for brands, I've got like a team and there's editing and there's like, you know, other people to do the stuff and I just do the fun part. This has been very homemade. I mean, I really editing most of only this season did I hire an editor, this guy, Isaac, who's great who's at SUNY New Paltz, who's great. And he's helping me do things a little more professionally. I, I've been self-taught. So I think the biggest difference was having to do stuff on my own, you know, recruit my own guests, learn how to interview, mix and things. And just, I'm not that great at it. So I think the, the questions and the topics and the marketing of the podcast, I was pretty good at, though not great. Like it was hard, it was harder to grow the podcast than I thought. A lot of things I tried, um, that I would do for a classic product didn't work. And so I had to try some other things to grow the show. Um, and, and that's a, you know, an ongoing quest, like, especially since I'm a marketer, I should know how to do this. So it's, it's tricky too. But then the craft of making the show is, is the hard, you know, is harder. And I think I'm trying to get more professionals to do that instead of me trying to become a professional, you know, editor or sound engineer. We like to think of it mm -hmm. as having an artisan podcast. Yeah. We talk to a lot of people who mm -hmm. it, in the Hudson Valley, and I feel like this is one of the ways that the Hudson Valley really shines. There are so many makers and so much handcrafted artisan unique stuff. And that often means it's a little rustic. Things are not mass produced. And so that's us. We're, we're just rustic is our excuse for our handcrafted podcast rustic that's sounds sweet. a little dirty like it doesn't sound very clean. <laughs> yeah well, that's, that's my brand so i am sweet. a little so dirty 
<laughs> That's our Jennifer. That's why we love you. What? Well, so uh, when we started this, um, we were very proud of ourselves because you should be. You should be. Your show's terrific. Well, thank you. But oh, so thanks. we were looking at the royalty-free music that comes in the podcasting platforms and I wasn't loving it. And I felt like I really wish we had like bespoke music. I want our own theme song. I was really scared of choosing something from like that stable of royalty free music and then finding out that some other podcast with um, maybe political views that are very at odds with ours had the same one. So we lucked out. Um, and we had Robert Burke Warren on our first episode. He's a musician and an author from Phoenicia. And he had a song that we just fell in love with. And we said, can we use this for the first episode? And then he was kind enough to let us use it in perpetuity. And so it's on every episode. So it's kind of our theme song. It wasn't written for us, but it is unique music that nobody else has for their podcast. Yeah, that's great. You, you went one step farther and you actually had an anthem created that you collaborated with some musicians. And I know yep. you're proud of that. Tell us about the city at Anthem. Yeah. So the city at Anthem was like, everything I do is a bucket list. Like I want it, like I want to do this. I want to have a show, you know, you do it. Like I, I wanted to produce a song. I've always wanted to produce a song. And so when I realized I needed, I realized that the show was an opportunity to create a piece of music that could also work as a theme show for the song. I didn't, I wanted an independent hit though. Like I wanted to create, something that would stand alone like a full full length song and i'd never done it before so it's kind of on my bucket list um so i um a ben who i know from like social circles here in town i knew was a musician as well as a music teacher and an instructor and a composer so i asked him and he was like absolutely and then he hooked me up with his studio and i we we worked together and i got to be a co-writer um of this, and we produced a, prof I think it's a professional song, a full length song that, yes, it's an anthem, but it's like a ballad. Like that was the idea was to create a city at ballad. We ended up turning it into a little video. It's on YouTube. It's really funny. We did a little cartoon and we heard it. And um, it's like a little- It's anime. catchy as heck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought it's I, awesome. I, I thought I would get so wealthy off this song, but apparently you really got to release an album, <laughs> an individual hit. <laughs> But it was a great experience. <laughs> it was a great learning how to produce a show, getting, you know, I made like three cents off it, like no money. And, but it became an asset. And then I have different versions of it I use, and it's very distinctive and people, people really like it. So it really, really made me happy. Um, and so now I've, you know, I would create another one now, you know, I would, but I think it's really got staying power. So I guess I encourage people to, if you want to do something, you probably can do it in the Hudson Valley. There's the right crafts people up here. There's people that are passionate about it. Oh yeah. There's something about they added so much to it that I didn't expect, in terms of local flavor and music styles and just expertise. So I was really, I'm just really thrilled with it. There's a whole episode just about interviewing them actually. That's the season. Yeah, debut. we listened to that. Yeah. It sounded mm -hmm. like you I had so much fun. And I love that creative spirit of the Hudson Valley that you can just go to some musicians that you know and hang out with and say, you know what? I want to make an original song for my podcast. And they're like, cool, let's figure out how to do that. And I feel like that's a really characteristic of the creative people that live in the region. Well, and do you know, you know, Connect HV, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's this yeah. big creative mm -hmm. network. Jordan. He came on my show, Jordan. Yep. And he's has he yep. been on your and he's he built out this he will be, network, yeah. and now he built out a huge Slack channel. Yep. And they're starting to have events with Barn Fox, who I just met. I met Freddie from that. Mm -hmm. And they're and it's just this and this it's like selling out the events. Like there's this hunger for all sorts of creative professionals, which could be technology, it yep. could be the arts, it could be you know more classic design or theater. Um, there's Hudson, Hudson, HUD TV, you know, the kind of the Netflix for the Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. So there's just, there is a big boon in this area and it's no surprise. I mean, this is the area of, of Woodstock and, yep. and Tivoli and, and Poughkeepsie and a lot of colleges around. So it's not surprising that this area would be, would be vaguely interesting. We need to hook up Jordan from Hudson Valley Connect with our new best friend, DJ Jimmy from Out Loud Hudson Valley. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because he's a live events guy. That's what he does. Yeah. So. So, but there's just so many good yeah. connections. That's what I love about that Slack channel that Jordan put together is 
we've met so many people through that Slack channel already. Um, and just, you know, making connections sure. between people who want to connect with other people and we can help facilitate that. And it's been really fun. That's where we met Danielle through, correct? Yeah. Where we had Danielle on the show. Yep. Yep. From Westchester. Yeah. Very cool. So let me ask you, what is, what is your process for coming up with episode ideas, inviting guests, putting together content? I mean, everybody's kind of got their own way of doing things. How do you come up with this content? And do you have a dream guest you want to get to really feel like you have made it? <laughs> That's a great one. Um, I think, well, so my, my, I have a, you know, I work in brand strategy. So I have, I have a city at brand and I have what it stands for and what it is and what it isn't and the, and the personality of it. And that kind of guides me in what I might cover and what I, what I wouldn't cover. And curiosity is a big pillar of it. Um, so there, my process is often things I'm really curious about. Why are barns red? You know, what's, what, why are Callie's eggs so delicious? You know, what's it like in a farmer? I'm interviewing a firefighter soon because I'm like, what does city it's do wrong that, you know, we shouldn't do like what's, you know, it's gotta be bad. Right. And um, <laughs> so there's like, I have questions. So my questions are my process. Um, sometimes I get people pitch me on something and like, you know, feature my business. And I'm like, well, what's the hook? What's the question? Like, I don't care, you know, but if you're another person that grew up here that went away, that came back, that's kind of interesting. Right. So I can talk about before and after, or, if you started up a business that no one expected, that's interesting, right? If it's you, you know, your gluten-free episode, right? Like I, if you if you hadn't done that, I probably would have wanted to, because I I need to find gluten-free stuff, you know. So I think if there's a hung, my you process. You still can. We'll introduce you to Lindsay. She's awesome. Yeah, maybe I'll mm -hmm. do more more on there's it. So many gluten-free people around here too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I've got all these sorts of weird allergies. And um, so I think at first it was my it was my journal of my experiences and my questions. Then I got the confidence to start interviewing people. And then I was doing too many interviews. So then I tried to rotate episodes where one was me rambling, then an interview, then me rambling, then an interview. Because I wondered whether the audience was getting worn out and got sick of meeting other people, you know? Um, and maybe they got mm. sick of me if it was just me. So I went back and forth. But now I haven't been as formulaic about it. I think this season's still new enough um, that I haven't really decided. I keep a big list of questions that I want to do. I mean, your fantasy guests, I mean, there are celebrities, of course, that I think I'd love to have on, but I think one that I'm chasing right now, if anybody can help me put in touch with them, I send a lot of notes, but I get no response, is I want a weatherman. I want like Hudson Valley weather or, because weather is such a big thing up here. And I have so many questions mm -hmm. about the different ecosystems and especially during the winter would have been good, but maybe I could do one for, you know, in advance of next fall um and and the bad weather coming but i really my fantasy is to talk about talk about the weather and have a, some have the sam champion of the hudson valley come on mm -hmm. or maybe sam, sam champion. champion i love oh, that yeah i was gonna say yeah I, that's such a great reference the sam champion of the hudson valley i love that He's so the, it's so like bleach yeah. Sam. yes some of the meteorologists yes. from the tv yes. stations in the albany area would probably be open to that i would think yeah that's a good idea mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely there actually is a guy, I have to think about this. I will get back to you on this. There is a weather guy. He may have originally been um, in the city, but he goes around and does in the Hudson Valley now, does these shows like goes to elementary schools and goes to other schools, but he does a lot of things in the Hudson Valley now where he does educational stuff on, on the Hudson, uh, on the weather in the Hudson Valley. So it's not quite Hudson Valley weather, um, but he, and, and I not, thinking of his name, but you would absolutely, he's another Sam champion. You would absolutely know his name um, if I could think of it. So yeah. Um, and he's, oh, he's very who's approachable. Oh, who's the guy who was on Good Day New York for years and years? Dave, he's from Poughkeepsie. What is his last name? Anyway, we'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. We'll get on it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Al, Al Roker's up here a lot. He gets his haircut in Hudson. He is. Or used to. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe I could kind of, um, but I don't know. That's, that's a good one too. That All right. Well, if you too. have any connections, I am still trying to get Hillary Burton Morgan. She's my dream yep. guest. I love her book. Yep. 
grimoire girl is sitting right here. Um, so it'll happen. It'll happen. And I mean, she's so involved with so many passion projects in the Hudson Valley. She, I think she's just really busy, but it'll happen. Hillary, I'm waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I'm a dream guest. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So very good. So you made it to 100, which is awesome. You did you. I listened to your 100th episode and it was very cute because you have people who leave you these voice memos and you shared some of them. And I think it was your brother-in-law who described you as being very generous. Oh, I know. And yeah. I, that was our impression too. That was sweet. When you said, Hey, do you guys want to, do you guys want to do something together with a podcast? And we're like, uh, that's idiot. He's like been around for years and like won the chronogrammy and stuff. And then we had our planning call and you were just so open about like, here's where I get ideas and here are some of the resources that I use. And it was just, I mean, that's, I think that's who you are. And that's a very Hudson Valley spirit, but just that generosity of being like, Hey, I want to see everybody do well. There's plenty of room for all of our podcasts and just like no sense of competitiveness and just sharing all of your, all of your knowledge with us, which is very cool. Um, but so you, you made a hundred, but you, do not show any signs of slowing down. So what's next? Like, where do you really want to go with this? Just keep getting your questions answered. Yeah. So I still have questions. I th still have, I think I'm very curious whether video, video podcasting is expected to get big, especially with the move as YouTube grows. So there's an open question for all of us with podcasts is should we make the move or not, or how to use video as part of the mix. So could I do audio and then every once a month or once every quarter have a video special and you kind of do both. So one, one possible scenario is expanding the media and having more variety of format. And another idea would be city it as I own the trademark. And is there more services besides audio that one could give people coming upstate? Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage people. I end every episode with come visit. And I mean it. I mean, don't come visit me, but I mean, come visit. And so, you know, more <laughs> itineraries, more guides, more the city of tour bus going around, probably getting mud thrown at it, you know, like, get, get Ooh, out of your city. That's you know, be funny. Funny. But I'm just saying, I, for me, for the, the show is the idea. And the idea could be more shows, spreading format, or could be, you know, how could it be a useful, a useful service? Yeah, we wrestle with that video question, too, because we both don't love it. But that is absolutely the direction that podcasts are going in, I think. And we actually tomorrow we are interviewing for a future episode, Lola Kalade. She's a content creator. She's based in the city and she has a brand new podcast called The New New. And so she kind of started out as a, a TikTok Instagram content creator. So her podcast is just by default, it's video. You can also get it on, you know, iTunes or whatever and just listen to it. But, um, and, and she's younger than us, let's say. I think she actually just wrote about turning 30. So I definitely think that's the next generation of podcasting is the expectation is it will be video. And if you want to get an audio only version, you can. So yeah, we're figuring that out too. And do you, I mean, you, you're more ambitious than I am. I mean, I was bi-weekly at, at my biggest volume and that's when I had a big sponsor so that I really wanted to do it. I, that's, you know, you're doing weekly. We didn't know. We didn't know what we were doing. We figured that we wanted to build up some momentum and build up, you know, right. a body of work. Right. Uh, I do think we'll probably go bi-weekly eventually. We would love to get some editing help. Um, I have a couple ideas for like spinoff shows that I would like to do, which <laughs> we can't put out a whole other set of shows. So maybe we'll do Valley Girls every other week and then our other kind of vanity projects on the weeks in between. Oh, that's fun. So we'll see. We've talked to so many people that, you know, when they hear about the, the our podcast, there's been quite a few people that be like, oh, great. Yeah, give me the information. I'd love to watch it. And we're like, mm, there's no watching. Nothing to see there's, here. There's just... There's nothing to see. You can watch your phone, but, um, you know, so we, and we have put up like little clips and things like that occasionally, but, but the point is, is just that that for some people, especially younger people like that is, that's the reaction is, yeah, no, I'd love to watch the podcast. So eh, yeah, it's interesting. 
it's interesting that that's definitely the direction that it's going. But I love the idea of the tour bus, though. That's very cool. I know. And can you see it? Like I see doing a tour bus and then I arrange it with all these farms and things where just at the right time I turn the corner, the cow comes across and crosses <laughs> and we have to stop. And we have a photo Love up, it. right? Like it's all, con and then, you know, there's mud and I, you know, fall into, get stuck in the mud and, you know, I can't get out. And, you know, it's all like set up to be like an experience. Oh my God. I don't know about being Hilarious. able to stage manage the livestock, but there Duh. are so many uh, cideries and wineries. So you yeah. could do a whole city at tour bus of those areas. And then also you should hook up with our friend Andrea, who was on, episode three i think from cloverbrook farm yeah. in hyde park and she does all kinds of tours you can go you can walk the donkeys you could so she's mm -hmm. it's a it's a working fiber farm but she amazing. hosts yeah, tours and so you can go and hang out with her alpacas yeah. and her goats and like just do trail walks with the donkeys and people go there to do like photo shoots so that would be a fun place to take people on the bus too. That's she great. does, you can take yoga. It's called Lama Stay because you just have llamas walking around <laughs> you as you do. As, but it's not like the goats that, you know, they'll poop around you. It's just the llamas. They just like walk around you and they're just super chill. But I still, I still want to get down there and take a donkey walk. But I will say, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with Jen on this one. I am all about staging the livestock, and I, I will help. You know, just kind of like give a little tap to the cow, move it across the street because I love that idea. I think that's hilarious, yeah. and I'm, I'm into yeah. that. That's hilarious. Yeah, look for it. <laughs> oh God, that's so great. So supposedly there is life beyond podcast, or so I've been told. What is yours like now that you're a full-time Hudson Valley resident? What are your favorite things to do? Or as we say here, you know, what are your greatest hits of the Hudson Valley? What makes you happy in the Hudson Valley? Well, I've got, you know, I've got two places. Like people that listen to my show know, you know, I'm at Claremont a lot. I'm at Greg Farm a lot in the trails or Burger Hill in Rhinecliff or the Ashokan over on, you know, which is outside Woodstock and Kingston. Um, so there's places like na nature places that I really, really like. Bishvesh Falls are on the east side of the county. Um, I became a Dutchess County uh, certified tour ambassador. So I really, I really know my stuff. I'm certified. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, it was hilarious. And, um, but there's, there's also things I like to do that are my favorite thing to do, which is going down like a road I've never gone down before. So I have this, we all get in our habits and I'm like, what's down that road? Like I'll go down, you know, I try not to go down private roads cause those are scary. And I think everybody, you know, is gonna like, you know I'm gonna look like a city, you know but, um, or I'll get stuck. <laughs> I used to have a mini. So my mini would get stuck everywhere. So I stopped getting, a, don't get oh, a mini. Um, a mini, like a tiny one. Um, but but I, I like, I, things I like doing are going down roads I haven't gone down before, going to places I haven't been before um, or I'm kind of a joiner, so like I'll go to a lot of weird organizations or things or club meetings, but I mainly go once because I can't, I can't seem to like commit. You know, I, I'm not a regular. I'm not a good at mm -hmm. being a regular. I'm a taster. Um, so I guess mm -hmm. that's that. And there is a lot of that. You just have to really work hard, I think, to find things to join or be a part of. Um, yeah. But it's, I'm sure it's very sad. Like it's one of the ways to meet people. So it's a good it's a good thing to do. So I'm an advocate for it, even if I'm not a good follower of it. That's fun. No, that's great. There's, so there's that curiosity again, um, which I think is really, you know, like you said, it's one of the pillars of your brand. I think it's also a pillar of your personality. So aside from the podcast and aside from going down every road you've never been down, which is going to have bittersweet symphony in my head for the rest of the night now, um, what's, what's your Hudson Valley wish list? What are the things that you're like, these are my other bucket list Hudson Valley experiences. Does anything come to mind? Well, there's a lot of like festivals I haven't gone to that I want to go to. So, you know, I haven't gone to the garlic festival, which I heard oh, is really good. It's so good. Mm. Yeah. Like, you know, the balloon thing over the Hudson thing. Yeah. I went one mm -hmm. year to a launch near me at Miglarelli Farm, but I didn't go to the big balloon thing further down where there's like hundreds of balloons. So there's a lot of these seasonal festivals that that I want to you know that I want to do there's a lot of ones I'm kind of over like Sinterklaas and Rhinebeck which is like all the rage like I could like don't ever need to go to that again like I'm done 
Like, it's fine. Like, I get it. I don't have kids. Like, I don't care. Um, and uh, it's also the same day, which is funny, of Hudson Night Walk, you know, Winter Walk. It's an, I love that they schedule the two biggest things in the area the same night. It must be intentional, right? Um, so mm-hmm. there are, um, yeah, there are experiences that I think I still crave to do. I mean, I wish I were more athletic so I could, like, hike those mountains. But, like, that's not going to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you go up Burger Hill, you could see they have the map of the, on the stones of what the mountains you're looking over at. So that's as close as, as I've gotten to those mountains. Um, it's still a beautiful view. It's a great yeah. view on Burger Hill. Yeah, like I don't want to go canoeing. I don't want to go whitewater rafting. I'm terrified. Like I have a lot of, I have a lot of no's. Um, but I do, festivals are my kind of thing. Um, places, there's like all these towns on the map. I'm like, oh, what's that? Like, what's Margaretville? Oh, I know someone named Margaret. Like, you know, like that kind of thing. Like I would do, do that. You know, I also, fan, I have fantasies of West, the Western Catskills. Cause like to mm-hmm. me where I live, like mm-hmm. I think the world ends. Like what, what's after Phoenicia? Like what happened? Yeah. You know, like, is there something? just drops off, it just drops off the mountain. Right. It's, there's nothing. Right. Yeah. So I want to go find out, Oh, you know where I really want to go? My father-in-law is going to go with me. Um, now that he's back from Florida, we'll probably go this spring. That town with the books. Oh, Hobart? yes. Yes. That's a fantasy for me too. Yeah. Hobart. It's not that far from me. It's like an hour, I think. Nice. And so I want to go with my father-in-law and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go to the little bookstores. It's like a town full of books and stuff. It's Hobart. Lovely. I hope you do an episode about that. I will. I will. Awesome. That's so cool. Well, I um, I was laughing when you were saying like, I'm not going to do all the mountains because Jenny's husband is like Mr. Catskills hiker. And last time that I was up there for the weekend, he was getting ready to go do slide mountain. And I was like, oh, can I, can I go speak. hiking yeah. with you? And he's like, okay, but here's the route that we're going to do. And it's 17 miles and I'm going to be gone for six hours. It's not 17 like, miles. Oh, okay, every time, never mind. every time he said it and like, it, it's not, it was like six or seven miles that he was doing. But every time he said it, it's like, he kept getting higher by the end of the weekend. I think he's like, yeah, I'm doing 32 miles to my, it was not. It is the highest it just peak. Kept getting though, higher. But I will tell you, <laughs> it is if, you if you want to be like, so I always say that I'm outsidey. i I'm not outdoorsy. Like I like to be outside. I like to see birds and flowers and stuff, but I'm not like rugged. But Sam's point is a very cool hike. It, it's, it's a walk. It, there's steep, you know, you, you gain elevation and then there are the ice mm-hmm. caves, which are super cool. So that's, I think that's technically an Ellenville. Um, so that's a cool hike to do if you want to like have some hiking cred, but you're not going to need to like rappel down rock faces or anything. So. Right. I interviewed, um, do you know, Sean from mountainhiking.com, that blog, he was great. I was just about to say you had, you had a recent guest. Yeah, he was, was he's, he was a great guest. And he's three, really right? a diehard. He tells you like how not to get killed and, mm-hmm. and like how to like survive and mm-hmm. what to bring with you. And, and he was hilarious. But like I'm never, mm-hmm. I'm never doing that. And get up early, get up in the morning and do exercise. I'm like, mm-hmm. I learned there's a difference between a walk and a hike. <laughs> yes, there is. There I think is. one a hike, For sure. one has elevation or something. Like that's mm-hmm. some, there's a rule. Yeah, I'm gonna call it hiking if just, I'm walking outside. I know. Let me have that. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I like to feel better and call it a hike, whatever I'm doing. And that that was the funny thing about Jen going quote unquote hiking with, with my husband's name is Matt as well. So, you know, when she was going to go hiking with Matt, I was like, yeah, you don't understand when Jen wants to go hiking with you. She's picturing like a carriage road, maybe gravelly. It doesn't have to be paved, but she's not like scrambling up. Anywhere. I want to take like, pictures of the fungi and the flowers and the bees. <laughs> maybe I'll see a chipmunk. That's like peak hiking experience. So we're snake. Yeah. Oh, we remember we went to Minnewaska and we, we saw snakes. You're so, yeah. remember Aaron was taking pictures of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, on that note, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And yes, indeed, for being so generous with your time and your expertise. And congratulations on your 100th episode. And I can't wait for the next 100. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you both. I'm so glad you're having a great first season of many. <laughs> And I'm excited to see who you have on next. And so I can get to know the Hudson Valley even better. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much, Matt. Thank you to all our listeners. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to help support the Valley Girls, please follow our podcast from our show page on whichever platform you listen from. Leave a rating and review, and please spread the word and share our podcast with others. We really appreciate your support. 
To stay up to date with the Valley Girls and for more content, you can find us at valleygirlspodcast.com and you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Links to all our social media accounts are in the show notes. And you can also connect to them through our homepage at valleygirlspodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. Bye-bye. The music for this episode is by Robert Burke Warren, entitled Painting a Vast Blue Sky, and can be found on his album, Redheaded Friend, available on iTunes and Spotify, and at the link in the show notes. Thank you.